brought to you by Bangkok Bank. Rajamongkon University of Technology, Thanyaburi. Good morning, ASEAN. Freshen up your world, your thought, and your idea with us every Monday to Friday from 7.30 to 8 a.m. I am Nira Shamali Saklamiya. And we are the overseas it's Thursday, the 29th of August, and we are still following closely on the situation of the uh, rubber protest right. in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So following the events, despite growing pressure from rubber farmers, the government has refused to bow to their demand that the rubber price be paid by the 92 baht per kilo. Agriculture Minister Yukon Lim Lam Tong yesterday stood there by the government's offer of 80 baht per kilo during an hour long negotiation session with farmer representatives. Farmers' leaders from the north and the northeast walked out of the negotiation room at government house and lambasted the government for ignoring rubber farmers' plight. Meanwhile, the Ram Kamhang University student organization plans to join the mass rallies of rubber farmers across the country on Tuesday coming. Rubber farmers are preparing to stage huge protests in various provinces on September 3rd to demand that the government shore up the rubber price, which has plumbed during the past two years. Utai said that the government had ignored farmers' problems and was apparently engrossed in the granting of political amnesty. He showed up at parliament to submit an open letter to Prime Minister Ying Lakshinawat, urging her to show her sincerity by addressing the crisis of plunging crop prices, stopping the politicization of the protests, and investigating the use of force against rubber planters in Nakhonsi Tamarat. Last Friday, some police and farmers were injured during clashes when the protesters cut off a road, the blockage of the road and the railway continue in the southern province. While some rubber farmers in other areas have said the railway action is not appropriate, they do not rule out the possibility of occupying roads next Tuesday if their plight continues to be ignored. He believes that the rally on Tuesday in Suratani will draw more than 5,000 participants. Songkran Kampisai, chairman of the Bungan Rubber Farmers Network, said that more than 30,000 farmers in the northeast would head to the mass rally in the Konrachasima Sikkyo district on Tuesday, where the ceasing of a road has been planned. Prompong operate spokesman for the Pure Thai Party said that the government was ready to listen to what rubber farmers had to say. Besides the rubber protest, there is also the recent stock uh, falling of the stock prices in Thailand as the uh, finance minister said that the flow of hot money out of Thailand is almost over, which should calm the stock market, while the Bank of Thailand governor has urged authorities to conduct a roadshow to improve foreign investors' understanding of emerging markets' economic fundamentals. Kitirat Nalanong, Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister, said yesterday that most of the capital remaining in the Thai economy was for long-term investment, so market volatility should ease. Falling stock prices should attract those who want to invest more. Long-term investors may be interested, Kitirat said. Since the U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman raised the possibility that monetary stimulus or QE would be tapered, Almost all of the hot money that poured into Thailand recently has flowed out again. Bank of Thailand Governor Prasan Trai Ratwarakun, speaking at the sideline of the same event, said the risk to Thailand's credit rating post by capital flows could be reduced if foreign investors had more knowledge about emerging markets' economic fundamentals. The Thai Central Bank uses its Thailand-focused seminars to improve such knowledge, drawing a large number of foreign participants to the events. Thailand's fundamentals remain sound, with high international research a strong financial institution system and a satisfactory current account balance, he said. Given low <clears throat> export growth and declining imports, the BOT forecasts a relatively balanced current account or slight deficit throughout 2013. And now let's shift our attention to Indonesia as Bank of Indonesia or BI said that the Central Bank's Board of Governors meeting or RDG, which is scheduled to be held today, would be aimed at comprehensive reviewing the global and national economy. 
BN Governor August Matawat Dotro said after a meeting with the Budget Committee at the House of Representatives in Jakarta on Wednesday that BI hold the RDG meeting every week and every month. In the monthly meeting, all aspects of national and global economy are reviewed comprehensively. In the weekly meeting, there is a similar review but not as deep as the one in the monthly meeting. But to review the latest economic condition, he said that BI could not wait until the monthly meeting took place on September 12. He further said that BI had warmly welcomed the government's decisions to issue four big policies to tackle the current account deficit and to contain inflation and as well as to promote better economic growth and investment flowing sustainably. The governor said that the current economic conditions did not mean that Indonesia was at a bad place or even more affected by crisis. He asserted that BI had continued to safeguard the stability of the rupiah exchange rate to stay at a level that reflected strong economic fundamentals. As more fires were detected in the Indonesian island of Sumatra, the air quality in parts of Malaysia are said to have worsened. The smoke haze is currently being blown across to Malaysia from Sumatra, where the number of hotspots detected is said to be more than 250. This is almost as high as the figure that was recorded during the peak haze period two months ago. On Wednesday afternoon, the air quality in Sungai Petani, which is located in the northern Malaysia, reached unhealthy level. Putrajaya, which is surrounded by peatland, isn't spared from the haze either. Although the Environment Ministry has yet to issue any warning, they are on haze alert and will inform the public if the situation worsens. In July, the Education Ministry revised the threshold for schools to close if the air quality reaches very unhealthy level with a reading of 200 and above. In June, hundreds of schools were forced to close in Johor, Malacca and the Klang Valley after the country was shrouded in thick, choking haze that originated from Sumatra in Indonesia. Now, Malaysians are keeping their fingers crossed on the ongoing haze situation shows no signs of improving. And now let's have a look at our special report of the former South African President Nelson Mandela. He becomes the first recipient for the Mahathi Award for the Global Peace. Former South African President Nelson Mandela was awarded the inaugural Mahdi Award for Global Peace. Current South African President Jacob G. Zuma accepted the award on Mandela's behalf. Describing Mandela as a friend, Tun Dr. Mahdi Mohamad says it is appropriate that Mandela received the award as he is truly a man of peace. I remember the first time I met Mr. Mandela in Zambia, just after he was released from Robben Island. I was expecting a bitter man or a broken man, for he spent 26 years breaking stones in Roman Island. Not many people can endure 26 years of captivity and hard work. But when I met him in Zambia on a one-to-one -one meeting, I found that instead of a bitter man or a broken man, I found a man who is extremely rational, who thinks of nothing else but the welfare, well-being of the people of South Africa. It is rare that a national leader rises to become a global icon, rarer still that they do so by compassion, not conquest. Only a handful earn such recognition that they are known not just to their own people, but to the world, known not only by their titles, but by a single name. We count ourselves lucky to find one in a generation. In the 20th century, there were three. Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and the recipient of today's award, Nelson Mandela. 
we are humbled as South Africans to share President Mandela with the world. At the same time, we are truly proud that our country and the struggle for liberation in particular produced such an international icon. This award comes at an opportune moment. Former President Mandela is still in hospital receiving treatment and remains in critical but stable condition. Najib also presented the Lifetime Campaigner for Global Peace Award to Dr. Made, who is seen as a fierce defender of peace. The Made Award for Global Peace will be presented annually to recognize those who have made valiant efforts in promoting peace. After break, find out why the ASEAN defense ministers are now meeting in Brunei. Brought to you by Bangkok Bank. Rachamongkon University of Technology, Tanyaburi. Southeast Asian nations or ASEAN defense ministers kicked off an annual meeting in Brunei on Wednesday, August the 28th. The 10 ministers met for what they term a retreat session at a golf club ahead of a series of meetings that will include their counterpart from the United States, Japan, China, South Korea, India and Australia. United States Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel on Wednesday held bilateral talks with counterparts from Japan and South Korea on the sidelines of a regional defense minister conference in Brunei. International security issues, including the denuclearizations of North Korea, are expected to be discussed in the bilateral meeting. Hegel said in his opening remarks ahead of the meeting with Japanese Defense Minister Itsunori Onodera, the one-hour discussion with Onodera was followed by a meeting with South Korean Defense Minister Kim Kwon Jin. Hegel's trips to the Southeast Asia region was shadowed by speculation on U.S. actions in Syria. The U.S. military is ready to act immediately if should President Barack Obama order action against Syria over a chemical weapons attack. According to Hegel, he said in a statement television interview with the BBC on Tuesday. The attack that could come within days would be the most aggressive action by Western powers in the Middle East nation's two-and-a-half-year civil war. Hegel was in Brunei to attend the annual defense minister meeting. He will meet Chinese defense minister Shang Wan Kwan and other ministers from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations countries later on. A series of regional and international security issues are expected to be discussed throughout the two days conference paving road for the ASEAN and East Asian Summit in October, where global leaders, including the U.S. President Barack Obama, who will attend the meeting as well. In Cambodia, the investigation of the alleged election irregularities are still going on, Kunir Shah, as the Constitutional Council has ordered the National Election Committee, or the NEC, to open the safety ballot boxes <clears throat> from 12 voting stations in Siem Reap province on Friday of this week to search for and verify alleged election irregularities as announced by the opposition party. The decision was uh, made by Exam Oil, president of the Constitutional Council, after Wednesday's opening of the ballot boxes from Batambang province's eight voting stations. The opening of the ballot boxes will be held at the NEC uh, head office at 8 o'clock in the morning. Exam all said that the Constitutional Court will send some of their representatives to oversee the opening of the ballot boxes. This will be the third instance that the Constitutional Council has ordered the NEC to open the safety boxes following the multiple complaints filed by the opposition uh, Cambodia National Rescue Party or the CNRP regarding their supposed election irregularities. 
And according to officials, Japan has promised help construct a 500 megawatt natural gas power plant in Yangon, Myanmar. According to the Japanese Minister for Economy, Trade and Industry, Mr. Toshimitsu Motegi said during a meeting with Myanmar President Tiansen that the power plants will be located in Hilantaya Industrial Zone and plans to be completed by 2015. An agreement for the project was made by Japanese Minister for Economy. Miatin Yang, chairman of the Hyang Taiya Industrial Zone, say that the minister agreed to provide technical aid for the power plants, which will be located in Hyang Taiya Industrial Zone. The electricity generated from the power plant is not only enough for the industrial zone, but also other townships. Japan will also help to construct a 50 megawatt natural gas power plant in Tilava Industrial Zone. Mia Jin Ong added that the gas propel power plant in Tilava is smaller than that of Hiliang Taiya. The Ministry of Energy has invited local and overseas companies to help generate 24 hour electricity for 15 industry zones in Yangon. Industrial zones currently operate with 5 hours a day of electricity except in rainy season. According to a businessman among 24 zones, in Myanmar, Hyang Taiya Industrial Zone is the biggest if the zone can manufacture with full capacity. The production will be increased. And if there is electricity, there is no need to worry about the 2015. Myanmar needs about 20,000 I'm sorry, Myanmar needs about 2,000 megawatts of electricity annually and it is estimated that the natural gas propelled power plants can generate 20% of total domestic demand. And that wraps up our Good Morning uh, CN edition. See you again same time, same week, same channel. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm Wina Jung Prasit. I am Nira Shah. Sawadee khao. Sawadee khao.